the album came out, we were thrilled, and I mean really thrilled, to sell 2,000 copies. I had a lot of records to sell in those days. By 1995, we were selling 2,000 out by the album every week. And they weren't even our biggest band anymore. I wrote out checks for $1.2 million to cover three months worth of Green Day royalties and sent a similar amount to the Internal Revenue Service. My father, who had always brushed off inquiries about my mostly non-existent accomplishments, began one-upping his cronies with, my son pays over a million bucks a year in taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Dad had graduated high school in 1931 during the depths of the Great Depression. That same year, my mother's family lost their home because her father, an unemployed auto worker, couldn't keep up with the payments. Having grown up steeped in such lore and having done time as a penniless squatter myself, my first inclination when I came into money was to stuff it under a mattress. But there was no longer a mattress big enough to encase lookouts riches, so when I was asked for the umpteenth time about making a video, I said, sure, why not? Let's try and see what happens. I had an interest make a little interjection here because I really fast forwarded a lot, but there was, uh, by this time, Lookout had become a multi-million dollar company and there was divisions of opinion. Like some people wanted to start acting like a multi-million dollar company. Others, mainly myself, wanted to keep operating out of my little uh, room, which is about like this size, where I live <laughs> run this company very successfully for quite a few years, but some of our other staff at Lookout and some of the bands were like, no, you got to start having offices and you got to start making videos and you got to start advertising in Spin and Rolling Stone because, you know, we want to be as big as Green Day. And I was like, yeah, but you're not Green Day and maybe you should, uh, I think I mentioned it in here, I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the story. 